Hi, and welcome to another Sutton Brain Hub video. I'm Dr. El Monsori, and today we're talking about the symptoms associated with a complete third nerve palsy. Third nerve refers to the third cranial nerve, also known as the ocular motor nerve, and palsy means a lack of function. If you're interested in, in examination of the cranial nerves, check out our video on that in the description. Third nerve palsy can come about several different ways. It can either be acquired or congenital. When there are many possible causes of a condition, it is worth having a system to try and organise those causes in your head. Vascular causes, like an aneurysm in the circle of Willis or a cerebrovascular accident, iatrogenic causes, such as surgery, trauma causes, such as head injuries, autoimmune disease causes, such as multiple sclerosis, metabolic causes, such as diabetes mellitus, inflammatory causes, such as infections, neoplastic causes, such as brainstem tumours, and drug causes, such as chemotherapy. The nerve can also be damaged anywhere along its course, starting at the nucleus in the brainstem, all the way down to the cavernous sinus and beyond to the superior orbital fissure and the annulus of Zinn. Here we can see typical symptoms that we would expect in a complete third nerve palsy, all caused by lack of supply of the ocular motor nerve. The trick is to remember that the other nerves innervating the motor and sympathetic functions in this area are now working unopposed, so all the effects we are going to see are actually from them. First of all, we've got a drooping eyelid known as a ptosis, and this is because the ocular motor nerve innervates the muscle of the eyelid levator palpebrae superioris. When that innervation is lost, the muscle ceases to function, and so the opposing muscle, orbicularis oculi, is the only muscle working on the eyelid, causing depression of the eyelid. The orbicularis oculi is innervated by the facial nerve. The eye is in what's known as a down and out position here, and this can be explained by the unopposed action of two muscles, the lateral rectus and the superior oblique, which are known as extraocular muscles. The lateral rectus is innervated by the abducens nerve, giving us a lateral pull or abduction. The superior oblique muscle is innervated by the trochlear nerve, and this is going to depress the eye. It's also going to offer some abduction, and it's going to offer some medial rotation, or intorsion, so that the eyeball is down and out in position. If we take a closer look at the pupil here, we can see that it is dilated, and this is due to the unopposed sympathetic innervation it's receiving. Remember, the parasympathetic function comes from the third nerve, and this would normally constrict the pupil. Without it, the sympathetic innervation is going to cause dilation, unopposed. The ocular motor nerve innervates the constrictor pupillae muscle inside the iris, which would constrict the pupil in response to light. Therefore, in its absence, we'd expect no response from the pupil, and the pupil would be fully dilated due to the unopposed action of the sympathetic innervation to the iris. It is sometimes possible to distinguish a cranial nerve 3 palsy caused by an external pressure, such as an aneurysm, or a tumour, from an internal process such as diabetes. This is because the parasympathetic part of cranial nerve 3 runs on the superficial part of the nerve, the outside. Hence, if the pupil is dilated, the damage is more likely going from outside inwards, such as in an aneurysm or tumour, whereas metabolic problems such as diabetes cause damage to the deeper part of the nerve first often sparing the pupil in the first instance. This is not a sensitive enough sign for diagnosis alone, but may lead you to suspect one differential over another before you confirm it with neuroimaging. Neurological assessment, carotid angiography, and CT scan should be performed without delay in a patient who you see with a new onset third nerve palsy. So that pretty much sums up everything about the oculomotor nerve palsy. 
we often use little ploys to help us to remember complicated topics. And an old teacher of mine once told me to remember the effects of the third nerve palsy by quoting John Lennon with, nobody loves you when you're down and out. When in doubt, remember that with the ocular motor nerve gone, the other nerves are working unopposed. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.